federal government to collect VAT from market traders, others, amid soaring inflation and consequent cost of living. Renewed rice smuggling threatens local production. Today we will be looking at the effect of that in our economy. We will also have uh, Off the Press where we'll look at major headlines from some of our national dailies. A very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. We do hope that you're having a wonderful day so far. Well, today we are, we are in the midweek and uh, a lot of you will only remember that, okay, during the midweek after you serve your work, you go for service and you go and praise God and you do a lot of things. But you are in the middle of the week. That means that you have survived Monday and Tuesday. So why not... Uh, have that positive mindset that if you could survive Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday is, or the rest of the week will even be better uh, because uh, that is what we like to always encourage you to do. Happiness is a choice that you make, no matter how biting it might be. Uh, like today, we'll be talking or dealing with the uh, issue of the value-added tax that is going to be collected uh, from traders in a country uh, where we are already facing hardship. So we'll look at that on the program this morning. But be that as it may, we do hope that uh, you are going to have a very, very wonderful day. Well, um, there are some, some topics we'd like to always uh, start your day with. Before we enter the, um, the real hot topics of the day, we'd like to take some things that are trending on the social media. For instance, um, yesterday we heard the news. Uh, we don't know when it came up, but yesterday it was on the news that uh, one person has been confirmed dead as uh, diphtheria breaks out in Abuja. And we hear that the diphtheria came from a neighboring Niger state into Abuja, and now one person has died. Diphtheria is a respiratory uh, illness that comes to your infection that comes, and it forms a growth in your throat. And it leads to a very difficult breathing time, as it is. It make, leads to uh, breathing being very difficult, and sometimes it can lead to death. So the, the point here is that everybody should be careful, and we're being advised that we take our personal hygiene very seriously. Uh, the outbreak of the deadly diphtheria uh, was confirmed by the Federal Capital Territory Administration after, claim, after it claimed the life of a four-year-old boy out of eight reported cases in Abuja. The disease was reportedly imported from neighboring Niger state, like I said, and the FCT Public Health Department, through its director, Sadiq Abdul Rahman, disclosed that the department two weeks ago was alerted of a possible outbreak of the disease in Day Day. The department is collaborating right now with neighboring states to stop further spread of the disease from contagious uh, states through border surveillance, and residents are advised to take their personal hygiene really, really uh, uh, seriously. Okay, so now uh, what that means is that wherever you are, you have to be very careful. Abuja is just um, a, a ride away uh, from Lagos, so people troop in and out of Lagos from Abuja every day, so there's a possibility it could also come. So what, what we're saying here is that do not panic, but be very sure uh, that your personal hygiene is top-notch at this point, and whatever can be done by the authorities to prevent this should be done. The authorities in the FCT are doing their best to prevent that by surveilling uh, the borders and all that, but um, they, there's only so much that they can do. You have to contribute your quota, making sure that that disease doesn't come into Lagos. If it enters Lagos, as crowded as we are, if it is contagious and it is, it's something that can be taken by contact and all that, then we know that it's going to be really, really bad. It doesn't matter that it's only one person that has died. That person has died and that is forever. Uh, it shouldn't be you 
uh, being the next person. So whether it is 100 people that died or it's one person that died, it's a disease that we should not want to come to our doorstep. So whatever we need to do as individuals, we should do. And whatever the government needs to do as an entity, they should also do and make sure that all of us are safe from diphtheria. We know that it is not Ebola, which was international, but you see, a, somebody came with Ebola from somewhere else and gave us here in Ni Nigeria. And we thank God for the bravery of our health workers, especially Dr. Adadevo, uh, that prevented its spread the way it could have spread. Okay, so we, we also know that um, COVID is also an international um, illness, and a lot of countries were interested in uh, what was happening in sub-Saharan Africa and everywhere else in the world. We may not have that kind of support that we had during the COVID, but we have to take care of ourselves and make sure that this diphtheria doesn't uh, come down to the south or doesn't even leave the FCT anymore and it should be contained wherever it is. So I, I think the, the authorities should do more enlightenment on how you can contact this, how you can prevent this, and how you can recognize it if someone has it so that you don't get to, um, to catch it as well, if that's the word to use. Okay, so good luck to everybody. Uh, applicants are told to apply for confirmation before attempting, attempting to break records. Uh, that is according to the Guinness World Records. Uh, you know that there's been a frenzy of record breaking. Someone said he was going to sign, that is do sign language for the longest time, sign a ton. Uh, someone said he was going to uh, stand at a roundabout for the longest of time, uh, that is a stand a ton. Uh, so many people want to cook and uh, beat the record of uh, Hilda Bassi. Um, by cooking for more than the, the 90 something minutes that he, she cooked for. Uh, one dummy wanted to cook for 150 uh, hours. I don't know what became of that. I've not heard about that. The 150 hours should be up by now. I don't know if she uh, started cooking again or she didn't cook, but um, there was that rumor that she was going to do that. And then we started seeing uh, armed policemen following her around. Whether that was a social media gimmick or not, we do not know what happened. Then a lot of people, the other person said he was going to read for the longest of time, read novels for the longest of time, and so on and so forth. So the Guinness World Record Management took to its Twitter page on Tuesday to urge interested applicants to ensure their attempt to break any record is verified by them before they embark on such a task. Now, let me just point out this. Breaking a record in Guinness World um, or, or setting a record uh, for Guinness World Records is not necessarily something that has to be a very, very difficult thing. The other day I was watching America's Got Talent and um, someone came on the show and broke a, a record. And guess what he was doing? He was just punching uh, one of the judges. You know, they were punching hands together. I don't know how they call that for the fastest time uh, that that has been done. And then he got a certificate. So you could, you, could, you could eat more than everybody else and break a record or set a record. You can blink for the fastest, uh, the fastest in one second or in one minute, you will win a record. So it doesn't have to be a particular thing. But Nigerians have taken social media and said that that was a sub to Nigerian people because, you know, they have been saying that now that Nigerians know that a Nigerian can, uh, can break a record, uh, then in no distant time, that Guinness Book of Records will be torn because there will be too many records that will be broken. Okay, in this um, uh, tweet by the Guinness World Records, they also said uh, the applicants can visit their website to see how the process works. Uh, this development is coming a few weeks after a Nigerian, Adeola Adeparusi, uh, embarked on a 150-hour cookathon to break Hilda Bass's record even before she was officially certified as a new Guinness World Record holder for the longest cookathon by an individual. It was after cooking for 150 hours that she disclosed that she didn't officially apply to break any world record. Now, she ended the task after collapsing while mass. Okay, so another Nigerian, Joyce Joma, who is a masseuse, also attempted to break the record for the longest massage uh, that they call Massageaton. 
uh, by an individual. She ended the task after collapsing while massaging a female. It was, however, not stated if her attempt at breaking the record was confirmed by Guinness World Record. Okay, so if you are a farmer and you make mounds, maybe you should apply to Guinness World Records and you make the most mounds in one day or in one hour. Uh, well, some of you may not understand what mound making uh, is when it comes to farming, uh, but some people who are in the agrarian area will know that when you're planting yam or cassava in so many societies, you make little mounds and then you plant them and they do better than just planting them on the ground like that. So maybe you try that as well. Whatever you do and you think you can excel, nobody else does it better than you, you can apply to Guinness World Record. But don't make the mistake that Dami, Chef Dami, as she is popularly called, uh, made. She cooked for 150 hours, allegedly cooked for 150 hours, only to find out that she didn't pass through the right channels. Uh, she could have broken that record by now. But, you know, that was uh, an effort in futility because it didn't get her anywhere. And by the way, uh, Guinness World Records does not pay for, for what you do. It's more like uh, singing in the Super Bowl halftime. They don't pay you for that, but it exposes you to a lot of things. So a lot of people do that so that they get fame. Uh, they get followers on social media and start to do other things to make money off of it and so on and so forth. So if you're going into it thinking that directly the Guinness World Records uh, management is going to pay you, I doubt if that is how it works. So far that I know, uh, they don't pay. If they have started paying, it's um, when I, I didn't get that information, I didn't get that memo. But if you're going into it, just go into it because you know you can do something. For instance, uh, one of uh, the players in Falcons of uh, Nigeria may be getting a Guinness World Record as the person who has participated the most in uh, World Cups, female World Cups. Uh, she's going to be, uh, on B, I think, she's going to be at the World Cup for the sixth time and probably will be like one of the oldest people that will be playing the World Cup at 40. So she just might get the Guinness World Record uh, without having to apply for it and all that. So if you're just good at what you do, people are watching. And if you do better than everybody else, uh, the Guinness World Records may just uh, be at your doorstep. For instance, we've also had someone, uh, I think from the East, the Asian countries. I can't remember the country right now, but he played professional football till up to like, like 56 years or so. Um, so if you check, you, you will find out the oldest football, professional footballer, you will see uh, where he is. So the frenzy for breaking records is a good thing. Competition is good, but your competitive spirit also should be just for the sake of the ability to do it, not just to show that uh, uh, somebody else, you, to make it look like... Um, you are jealous or to make it look like uh, somebody else does not deserve what they have and all that. Do it because you can do it and do it because you just want to show that your people are good enough to do these things. Not, competitiveness should not go beyond just the word competitiveness to rivalry, to, to bad belly, as we, we usually say in Nigeria. But that is how it is. Whatever you can do, go ahead and do it. Well, like I said, the... Uh, Traffic is quite good this morning. I hope it is continuing to this moment because as at the time that I got the report from LASMA officials, it was really, really good. So wherever you are, you shouldn't have the excuse. But we still use this time to tell employers of labor, whatever you can do to make sure that your people have some kind of uh, um, padding as it is so that they don't fall so badly, you should do. Uh, provide accommodation for them, for instance, for those of them that uh, come from a very far place, so that if they can uh, stay back after work every day uh, till weekend before they go home, let, let it be their option. Let it not be that they don't have any option. So provide accommodation, provide mattresses and all that. Maybe just dedicate one room uh, to the men and another one to the women. And some people will take that option because it is not enough to just say, come to work for three days. There are some jobs that should never be compromised. For instance, you go to a do state. A do state said workers should come to work, 
or should go to work three days in a week. And that also affected the schools. So schools will now go to, uh, children will now go to school three days in a week. Do we even have enough time in the five days that we have in a week? Every school or almost every school, I don't know about some others, but almost every school, at least here in Lagos, has what they call lesson. So after school, they will still stay for lesson. That tells you that the school hours are not enough to cover what they should cover. Or maybe, like some people will argue, it's just another way of making money. But even then, they teach regular uh, classes, they teach during the lesson period, and still they don't even cover the syllabus. So it's, you can't just say teachers stay home and come to work three days. The students will be missing two days out of a week that they should study. And you know, uh, I don't think that is a very good thing for us. So solutions rather than just staying home should be sought. And if the students have to stay home, maybe the government should also look at ways where they can be doing online teaching. And online teaching will be a difficulty now, especially that data yeah, it's like, you know, the, the service providers use funnel. They put funnel to your data and just drink it because you don't even know uh, how it goes. You, you, you subscribe for like 27 gig and in two days it's gone. You're not even downloading videos or movies or something. It's just gone. And you're not using 5G. It's just gone. And you'll be asking yourself, what really am I doing with this data? So. If the online study is an option, the government should look for ways to maybe give free Wi-Fi to various locations around the cities so that students who are close to wherever they are supposed to be studying from, from home, they can have access to Wi-Fi and log on to the Wi-Fi and then do their studies. Because if you say home study or remote study and then you're saying, uh, get a phone. Well, maybe some families cannot even afford that phone, but if they can afford the phone, getting the data will be a difficulty. So there should be areas where there will be free Wi-Fi, maybe parks, maybe some other places that children can go uh, or students can go to and freely sit there, do their homework, uh, learn from um, remotely and whatever they need to do. So these are all options. Like we were saying yesterday, Tech Tuesday, we said technology can solve all our problems in Nigeria. So technology can also solve the problem of education if we have to study remotely. And that's what I'm just saying uh, this morning. But it's a wonderful uh, Wednesday morning, and we're hoping that it's not raining where you are because the rain has been disrupting a lot of things uh, lately. But let's go to the weather right now to see what the weather says so that you can plan your day well. We'll take this short break. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us.